Hey guys, Bombing Science here. We're gonna go ahead and do a buff test on six of the mops that we carry in the store today. So we've got methyl hydrate as a buff, and we've got a run of the mill, um, off the counter buffing product that we got at a store nearby. And we're gonna try those two on um, plastic, glass, and a metal surface. And then we're also gonna try uh, bucket paint, latex on a wooden surface and see how they fare compared to different ones. The mops that we're trying out today are two ink mops and four paint mops. The ink mops are the Molotow Covers All Dripstick and the Grog Squeezer, 10 BPI, BPI meaning buff proof ink. The paint markers we've got today are a Junibo mop, a Grog Squeezer Mini 05 APP, a Grog Squeezer 10 FMP full metal paint, as well as a classic crank mop. And we'll see how these all survive to different buff methods. Maybe some will fare very well, maybe some will fare poor. And my expectation about the ink ones is that they'll do very well with the bucket paint, that they'll bleed through. Um, but other than that, I'm not really sure what to expect from the different ones, uh, and I'm excited to find out. We had the guys in the wear shop do some tags on these a couple days ago, so they should be fully dry the way they'd be on the street. Uh, so you can't, you should expect this to be pretty close to what you'll get um, with your everyday tags. Uh, it's not like any of these are fresh tags that are getting buffed right away. The ink had time to truly seep in. And also all the mops we're analyzing today are uh, available in our shop. You can click the link below. Let us know if you are surprised by any of the buffs or have any reactions, let us know in the comments. All right, let's dive in. So we're gonna start with the methyl hydrate on the mop tags on a metal surface and see how that fares. So first up is the covers all. We're gonna try buffing it with some methyl hydrate. So it's coming off, but let's see how much of a ghost it leaves. All right, so the opaque black part comes off pretty easily, but it leaves a pretty Pretty solid ghost afterwards. So you can expect it to, uh, probably expect for a lot of it to come off and leave a trace. Um, so it's, uh, it's got some stainer in there, but a lot of the opaque ink is coming off quite easily with the methyl hydrate. All right, next up we've got the crank mop. We're gonna try cleaning it up with some uh, methyl hydrate. So this is a paint ink. Let's see how it fares. Oh, not too well. It's mostly coming off with just the first go. So that's not very buff resistant. Yeah, that's uh, you can expect all of the crank tag to come off pretty easily with some basic methyl hydrate buffage. All right. Ne Let's look at the Grog BPI Buff Proof Ink. It says Buff Proof, so I'm hoping it's gonna live up to the name. Only one way to find out. Put some methyl hydrate on that. And you've got a pretty, pretty good ghost sticking around there. And it doesn't feel like it's a separate color as the ink over top, it looks like it's all of the ink is just staining it right away, so it's not like they've got stain in there as well as a regular, more opaque ink. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that, pretty pleased with how visible the stain is, and it's the same color as the ink, so you really feel that it's the ink itself doing all the staining. Um, so that's a pretty good ghost that that's leaving behind. Uh, so it definitely feels like they're living up to the name of BPI Buff Proof Ink. Happy to see that, happy to see that there. Uh, product is ad as advertised and also you can see like you can see how much of the stain is just moved around by wiping it with the methyl hydrate so it even as you break it down with the methyl hydrate the ghost just spreads so it's really uh, the the stain is baked in there pretty deep so that's a nice nice thing to see very messy very potent um, don't drop it on your mother's rug. Next up, we've got some Jinobo. 
We're gonna see how the Genovo comes off. Genovo is a paint marker, um, and uh, I'm expecting the paint markers to sort of come off pretty easily with a bit of um, methyl hydrate on a surface like this. It's non-porous, so um, I feel like paints often just stick to the surface. But we'll find out. Maybe they put some product in there, make it harder to buff. Yeah, so that's coming off quite easily. The Junovo is disappearing pretty consistently with just a bit of methyl hydrate, so um, not the most buff proof, but gives a nice tag. And if, if you're not looking for state power, that's a nice paint to use. Uh, next up, we've got the Grog APP. APP stands for Aqua Pro Paint, and it's a uh, Mostly used for artistic purposes. It's not really intended as a street paint. It's mostly just intended to use on, in the studio, but if you want to see how it fares, uh, we're going to try that out for you. So yeah, as you expect with a lot of the other paints on a metal surface, the methyl hydrate takes it right off. Um, so if you spill some, you'll know how to clean it. And uh, you'll notice there's a lot of this blue clouding following me around. That's from the ink earlier that just stayed on the rag. Um, but it's not uh, its not being caused by this paint right here. Uh, just keep that in mind. All right, and now for Grog's 10 full metal paint. Uh, let's see how that comes off with a bit of methyl hydrate over here. So it seems to... No, I thought... That's coming off as well. Um, so yeah, all the paints are coming off pretty consistently with a bit of methyl hydrate. So if you're looking for something that will last on the streets on a metal surface, uh, I'd really hedge my bets with some ink rather than paint. Uh, but that's up to you in the end, depending on where you are and what you're looking for. But if you're looking for it to last, uh, I'd, I'd go with some ink. All right, now we're gonna try with this off-the-shelf graffiti removal spray bottle. I don't know what ingredients are in this. I can't tell you about its chemical properties, um, but we're just gonna see what your average uh, uh, property owner would use when they're removing graffiti and see how it fares against that. So uh, just a few sprays of this on the covers all, and then we're gonna wipe it down and see if it comes off easily. So already I feel like this product is less effective than the methyl hydrate. A lot of this ink is just staying caked right in there. I really have to wipe and press against it to get it to come off. So if you want a, if you want a marker that'll survive people trying to buff it with run-of-the-mill products, the covers all really stays on there quite nicely. It's a big pain in the ass to take off. I'm not enjoying myself, so they probably wouldn't either. I'm liking to see that. Now let's see how the Crin K60 fares against this off-the-shelf buff product. All right, so that's coming off. It's leaving a bit of ghosting around the edges. That's also just coming off, so a bit more elbow grease needed than with the methyl hydrate, but they'll be able to get it all off, so. If you're using the Crank K60, you can expect it to get fully removed without too much trouble. Now the Grog BPI Buff Proof Ink. This really did a number with the methyl hydrate and I'm expecting it to perform even better against this off-the-shelf buff spray. So we're just gonna let that seep in a bit because let the agents, let the uh, chemical properties do their thing a bit. Let that seep and then we'll give it a wipe, see what happens. All right, so we can go ahead and give it a wipe, see what happens. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. And with the paint tags, the more I wipe, 
the more it felt like it was coming off. But with this, I feel like there's a saturation point where no amount of additional wiping will really get more of the tag off. So really, this survives very nicely against um, a purely buffing product. So your average, average Joe won't be able to get rid of that with a product like this. So that's, that stays true to its name. BPI, buff proofing, definitely as advertised. Now with the Genobo, that came off quite easily with the methyl hydrate and I'm expecting it as it's a paint to come off easily with this product as well. Give it a bit of a spray, let that hang in there for a bit and then uh, see if it comes off. All right, let's try to wipe this Genobo. I'll just flip this over to not get too much of the uh, BPI on it. The bonobo is wiping right off. So that's not a not buff proof by any means. So just know that if you're writing on any metal surfaces and you want them to stay there, I wouldn't use Genobo with that intent. Uh, Cause it'll it'll come off pretty easily. Now I'll try the Grog FMP with this buff product. See how well that stays on there. So just give it a couple of spritzes. Let it seek in, let it sink in. And go from there. All right, let's go in. So it's taking a bit more wiping than the Genobo, but it's coming off all the same. and. It's not like they would stop wiping after a few strokes, so. This I'd qualify as much as the other paints as just a, not a buff proof ink by any means, but if that's not your intent, then no worries. As for the Aqua Pro paint, we probably won't expect that to be buff resilient either, but let's try it out. We might be surprised. There might be some elements in it that make it more resistant. And there's only one way to truly be sure. So yeah, the Aqua Pro paint also comes off. All the paints, all the paints are pretty easy to clean. As far as metal surfaces go, just be aware of that if you're ending on lasting forever with a paint mop on a metal surface, you're probably doing it wrong. All right, so the big take home when you're looking at these comparisons of mop buffs is that the ink and the paints really perform differently on metal. The inks leave a really solid stain and the paints just get entirely wiped off. Um, what I like about the covers all is it's got this really nice opaque um, look at first glance before any buff and then afterwards it ghosts, uh, but it does feel like there's a two different products in it, one to stain and one to um, give it opacity. And so if you're looking for um, something that's purely stain, uh, this one looks like it's got two products in it. Whereas with the BPI, it really feels like the ink is what's staining and it's only one product in there. Um, that's my impression anyhow, but it does give you more of an ink translucent look as you're writing with it. So if you want something that's purely opaque from the get-go, the cover's all uh, performs better than the BPI, which uh, does have that translucence, um, but is purely uh, purely staying in there. Um, and then as far as the paints go, there's not a lot to say really on the metal surface. They all come off, um, but if you're okay with that, if you feel like it's gonna get removed one way or another, or if uh, you're fine with the transience of it, you might, can go ahead and use that on a metal surface. The, they work just as well. Uh, they simply get buffed easily off of it. All right, so now we're gonna try cleaning these mop tags on a glass surface with methyl hydrate. If I were a gambling man, which I'm not, I'd say that they're all gonna come off. Um, but if any of them do have uh, a lasting power, I'd expect the inks to leave a ghost first. Um, I'd be very surprised to see any of these paint markers leave a ghost or leave any kind of trace after I wash them off with some buffing product, but you never know. There's only one way to find out. So here we go. 
So this is the Aqua Pro. It's meant for the indoors, but we figured we'd test it out while we were doing the other ones, and uh, it really, it just comes off very easily. As far as the Junobo goes, it's on a bit thicker, it's caked on there, um, but it does seem to be coming off rather easily. Uh, so it does take a bit more elbow grease, but it's, um, it's on there pretty, pretty sturdily. You can see the drips are pretty thick, so that's why it takes longer and more product to remove it. But it's all coming off. So no ghost there, no surprise there either. As far as the K60 goes, this crink product is also coming off. No problem. So yeah, if you want lasting power, just don't write on glass especially not with paint markers, because it's gonna come off. So this is the covers off. So this is an ink on a glass surface, and it's really just leaving absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's fully gone. Now the 10 BPI, the buff proof. Also didn't stand a chance. So yeah, glass is really just a very easy to buff surface. This is the Grog Full Metal Paint, also disappearing. So this glass is good as new with just a bit of methyl hydrate. But maybe we'll be surprised and see that the off-the-shelf buff product doesn't do as well with some of these. Alright, so I'm not going to waste too much time, I'm just going to do a clear pass over all of these with this product. and. If any of them have a harder time getting buffed, I'll let you know, but I'm expecting it all to come off quite easily. So I won't waste too much of your time with that. Yeah, these are all coming off very nicely. Some take a bit more work than others to remove. But if at the end of the day they're easy enough to remove, it doesn't change much. This one's already coming off, I haven't even wiped it. It does leave a bit of a trace around the edge, but that's going to come off also. Or is it? Yep, that all comes off. All right. All right, BPI time. That's coming off, I'm not even wiping it. So, really any, any kind of hard to buffing on glass is just a waste of your time. Because it's no match for the smoothness of the surface. So, as much as these inks can be hard to buff, do keep in mind the surface you're writing on. Um, oftentimes it's not about the ink, but really the surface. Glass is really smooth, so there's nothing for the ink to really set into and um, make it hard to buff. So don't be, don't be upset if you use a product and it gets buffed and you feel like, oh, that was a hard to buff ink or, you know, it said this but didn't do it. Um, often it's about the surface. So yeah, glass and a lot of smooth plastics will just uh, just get buffed really easily because there's nothing for the for the stain to take a hold of for it to get into and leave that mark so do keep that in mind if you're trying to make a mess somewhere all right now we're going to try buffing off of a smooth plastic surface um this can has some texture but not so much it's pretty pretty smooth but i'm expecting that the inks and uh, maybe some of the paints will be able to get deeper into the pores um, and leave a, a better mark than on the metal um, but I'm not sure maybe maybe I'm wrong uh, only one way to find out so let's uh, start by buffing the ink one we're gonna try with the methyl hydrate first 
Okay, so I was fully wrong. That's coming off super easily. Um, it is leaving a bit of a, a ghost around, but I'm sure that if I really went into that, I'd be able to take all of this off with the methyl hydride as well. If anything, it's lighter now, where the tag was. So uh, the buff works really well on a smooth plastic surface. All right, now let's try the BPI tag. Let's see if it fares better on this plastic surface. Uh, but if it's anything like the covers all, it'll probably come off as well. So yeah, that, uh, that didn't stand a chance on the surface. There's a big stain. Let's see if I can take that stain off or if the stain is there forever, but my guess is if the tag came off, the stain will come off as well. It's just a hassle, but well, they'll have a hard time cleaning all that off. The tag will disappear without too much of a problem. So let's just go over the paint tags quickly and see if any of them survive. I won't make, a, won't talk about it too long if they don't. See, the Genobo is coming right off. The Aquapro paint is actually doing better than the inks were with the methyl hydrate on the plastic surface. I don't know what that's about, but pleasantly surprised there. So I'm getting a new, new part of the cloth, some white here, to see if any of the blue comes off onto there. So it is, it is coming off. Let's see if I can get to the bottom of this. surprising. Mm. Alright, so the APP is staying on there. So that's a pleasant surprise. Let's see if there's other surprises waiting for us over here. Alright, grog full metal paint. How does that do on the plastic? Pretty well. Could be full plastic paint. Does it leave a ghost or is that going to come off as well? Let's find out. Alright, so that's leaving the ghost on the plastic. That doesn't look like it's coming off. So I was wrong, the paints are doing much better than the inks on the plastic surface. Alright, now for the crank. The creek is leaving a bit of a ghost, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty hard at this point to read what was there. So it's a ghost, it's better than no ghost, but you'd have to know what was there before to really be able to appreciate that mark. Now it's time for the off the shelf graffiti removal product. Let's try it on the crank 60. See what kind of ghost that leaves, if any. Just let it set in there a bit.
the ghosting is much clearer with this product for what that's worth. But it's coming off. Yeah, it leaves only a faint ghost at the end. But hey, it's better than nothing. So the Crank 60 does leave a ghost on plastic. Good to know. Let's see how the covers all fares with this off-the-shelf buff product. Already just spraying it, you can see it started start to come off. I'm expecting it to get wiped off like with the other product, but we'll see. So yeah, that's coming entirely off. Just a bit of rubbing. No ghost, no nothing. So the covers all that fared very well on the metal is not doing the same thing on the plastic. Now let's see how the full metal paint does. So the full metal paint left a bit of a ghost, if any, with the metal hydrate. And yeah, it's coming right off with the off-the-shelf product as well. Now we'll try it on the Genovo. The Genovo tag is gone. And the APP, which we didn't expect to leave any kind of residue and did. How's that faring with this product? leaving a ghost. So it seems the APP is actually the most resilient on a plastic surface. Oh, sorry. Grog BPI. Look at that. I mean, that's beautiful. If you want to make some art with some buff and ink, you might as well. Let's see how the grog does. It's already coming off with the spritzes, so it looks like it's gonna wipe right off, but who knows? You will, in a few seconds. Yeah, it's not a match for this buff product. The drop is gone. All right. So a quick recap shows that the ink does not fare well on plastic. And as far as the paints go, the Crink 60 leaves a paint goes. Yeah, the Grog Full Metal Paint comes off very easily. Genovo doesn't stand a chance. And then the APP performed marvelously, which I did not expect. Grog is gone. So really the best ink for a plastic surface turns out to be the APP. Good to know. All right, so now we're gonna do a paint test on this wood surface. See if any of the paints or inks come through the paint. Um, my expectation is for the ink to pop through, but I might be wrong. Only one way to find out. Yeah, we'll let that stay for a bit. Mm. See if, as it dries, any of it pops through. So we'll let that dry and come back in a bit. All right, so we did the buff test on this wooden surface with some latex paint and 
to my surprise, none of them made it through the paint. So uh, all of these inks are not latex paint proof. Do keep that in mind if you're painting on a surface which you expect to get painted over with bucket paint. Um, it's not worth your time or effort to use any specific ink if they're all going to get covered just the same. So have fun on it, do whatever because it's going to get taken off with any of these inks. So we went ahead and buffed all these mops with different products on different surfaces to show you which was the best and how they all fared. And we see that some surfaces are simply not worth the effort of using any special inks on. Um, glass, for example, and wood, uh, everything got buffed just the same. Uh, meanwhile, on the metal surface, we found that ink performs much better than paint overall. And we also found that the Aqua PP is the top performer on plastic, leaving the best ghost compared to anything else. And that on plastic, or at least this type of plastic, um, ink performs worse than paint overall. So we hope this was helpful. We hope you found some answers in terms of how different inks and paints perform on different surfaces in terms of buffage and which are most likely to survive. And hope this helps you in your purchasing decisions moving forwards. Make sure to check these out in the link below if you're looking to get any of these. And thanks for your time. Have a great day.